1,500 people will lose their benefits. 1,500 people, like Donald Hendricks, could end up without medicine and without medical care if the government decides to go through with a plan to cut back on funding. We would send a letter that says, uh, due to overcapacity, you're no longer uh, enrolled in services effective today, and whatever's remaining of their medications will be taken, and then after that, they will just be on their own. That would mean not being able to see a doctor, not being able to get medication, not being able to get support that they need. And we're talking about people who already have services. If you have mental health problems and you're looking for services. Years, yes. Some people have to be on a waiting list for years before they receive uh, services. And they will have to uh, reserve to the uh, private practitioners, which uh, a lot of us are low income, fixed income people. It's a losing situation for everyone. One, two, Three. And that's why all of these people came out here to march. We're going to start from the front and go to the rear. Because I watched mental illness take my brother. For Gary Larson Air, it's personal. So I looked up to him. He was my mentor. And uh, so I've seen it, how it can damage lives and destroy families. And so it's, it's much more than a job for me. It's a passion. That's one example of a family affected by mental illness. 1,500 patients stand to lose benefits. Let's take a look at what 1,500 people look like. If we have to do this, the 1,500 are not going to wait for services. They're going to become sick, just like somebody with diabetes would, and they would end up in the emergency room. And that's exactly where our 1,500 clients are going to end up, in our local emergency rooms, in our jails, uh, and, and uh, on the streets. That's why politicians came to speak out. We are here today to get 1,500 people to show Austin this is what 1,500 people would look like. The city, the county, and our school systems all need to make mental health one of their priorities. And a psychiatrist came to speak out. We are getting old. We need new psychiatrists. We need new people to help support and help uh, mental health grow in El Paso. It would be great if everybody started contacting uh, their representatives and let them know that this is important. Even though we do have mental health issues, we are still human beings just like everybody else.